Hi everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotion. Today's reading is taken from Proverbs 15, and it reads, Proverbs 15. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools spureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the art of the foolish doeth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is is delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that had understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart at a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stall of ox and hatred therein. A wrathful man stirred up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is as an edge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counsellors they are established. A man at joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that ate it gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous study it to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoice at the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The hair that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Verse 33 and last, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. Verse 33 reads, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. And humility has to do with one being humble and we know that humble is not being proud. When you're humble, you're teachable, you're meek, you carry a meek spirit. 
The Lord resists the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. And we are children before God, and when one is humble, one will sit and listen and will do that which is right and pleasing in the sight of God. So, so the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord doesn't literally mean fearing God like you would fear a man that is hurting people, but it means to love the Lord, to love the Lord with all your might, your heart, your soul, your spirit. And that means doing that which is right and pleasing in the sight of God. That is what it means to fear the Lord. When you fear the Lord, you want to do right by Him. You do not want to do any wrong. You will try to please the Lord in every way you can. You, you, you try to seek His face on every matter. You do not want to mess up in His presence. You just want to do good. That's what it means to fear the Lord. And it says it is the instruction. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. God gives us wisdom. And we have to be humble before him. And being humble is being meek. And it's very hard to be humble. And some people will take meekness as a sign of weakness. Which is not true at all. Being meek doesn't mean that you're weak. It's just that you are, you are carrying a humble spirit you are very humble in the presence of god and in man it doesn't mean that a person is weak when they are humble it's hard to be humble it takes the grace of god for one to be humble and i share with you what the commentary says about this verse here verse 33 of proverbs 15 and this is taken from the ellen white commentary the Lord can work most effectually through those who are most sensible to, of their own insufficiency and who will rely upon him as their leader and source of strength. He will make them strong by uniting their weakness to his might and wise by connecting their ignorance with his wisdom. If they would cherish true humility, the Lord could do much more for his people. And uh, sharing something else from the commentary also. Seeds that produce a bad crop. Passionate words sow seeds that produce a bad crop, which no one will care to garner. Our own words have an effect upon our character, but they act still more powerfully upon the characters of others. The infinite God alone can measure the mischief that is done by careless words. These words fall from our lips, and we do not per perhaps mean any harm, yet they are the index of our inward thoughts and work on the side of evil. What unhappiness has been produced by the speaking of thoughtless, unkind words in the family circle. Harsh words rankle in the mind. It may be for years and never lose their sting. As professed Christians, we should consider the influence our words have upon those with whom we come into association. Whether they are believers or unbelievers, our words are watched and mischief is done by thoughtless utterances. No after association with believers or unbelievers will only counteract the unfavorable influence of thoughtless, foolish words. Our words evidence the manner of food upon the which the soul feeds. Our words evidence the manner of food upon which the soul feeds. That means we speak that which is inside of our heart. The, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the, the out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speak it. So, what we feed upon... That is what will come out. Our words evidence the manner of food upon which the soul feeds. So be careful what you're feeding your soul. Be careful of the things that you're putting in. Be careful. Read the scripture. Meditate upon the scripture. 
be a hearer and a doer of the word of God. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.